Photoshop's Quick Selection tool is my absolute favorite way to select an object, whether it be a person or an inanimate object. I use the Quick Selection tool first. I use it for about 90% of my selections, and then I may combine it with the Lasso tool or the Magic Wand tool. But Quick Selection is my go-to tool, and here is why. Quick Selection uses a brush. And if you stay away from the edges and paint by clicking and dragging inside her arm, let Photoshop do the heavy lifting. It found the selection edge for me. If I stay well away from the edge and get that round brush right in the middle of the top of her arm and her hand and straight down her hair to her back, Photoshop found all of these edges. Don't worry about these white portions inside. The quick selection uses a brush size. So with a larger size, it'll grab bigger areas. But I find people treat it like they were cutting out with scissors and paper. They're trying to cut right along the edges. If I wanted to isolate her and run some effects, which we are going to do in this video, try not to go to the edges. For each finger, I'm just going to click and drag over the finger staying well inside the middle. And if you go too far outside, don't worry. Photoshop will let you clean up your selected area. I want these wisps of hair, and I may get a little too much, but if I do, I can just undo and try again. But for these wisps, I'm going to actually choose a smaller brush size. So if I dial my brush size down to 15 or 20, somewhere around there. The smaller it is, the more carefully Photoshop will paint in those selected areas. Now is a good time to zoom in. I normally prefer Command Plus or Control Plus, and I'll scroll over. And I'm not going to worry about getting every hair. I just want the larger portions of the hair, because there's a feature called Refine Edge, which I use on every selection that will pick up all those fine wisps. And I got way too much of the background here. And my wheel is going pretty fast, sorry about that. But don't worry if you get too much. The quick selection often does a much better job cleaning up than it does with the initial first selection. So on the options bar, the bar across the top of your screen, I'm going to choose subtract from selection. And if I zoom out once and scroll down safely here, this big background was included. So again, I'm not touching edges. I'm staying well inside the white or the photographer's background. And I'm removing. And I'm happy with this. It's OK that you've got some white in there. I'll zoom in a little bit. I prefer Command Plus on the Mac or Control Plus on Windows. And my brush is still too large, so I'm going to size it down to 7, and I'll just paint away some of the white inside here. I'll do a big painting, trying not to touch her arm or eyelashes. I barely had to touch anything, and it cleaned up right there. If it got too much of her mouth, then what I'll do is go back to the Add to Selection mode, which is automatically on. But do remember to zoom in. You will be far more tired at the end of a day of Photoshop work if you're constantly moving closer to the screen and straining to see it. We can zoom in a lot in Photoshop. Take advantage of it. Now I'm going to choose View Fit on Screen to see the whole image, and I never finish a selection without running Refine Edge. Refine Edge lets me see my selected area. Not too shabby. But since she was photographed on white, seeing this on white isn't the most effective. So let's look at it by clicking the arrow to the right of View on black. And there we can really see if, if I move the Refine Edge window over to this empty space, I can really see the white that was picked up originally. So this is where Radius helps you out. Radius attempts to blend away the object, in this case, the model we were trying to select, away from the background. 
and it actually varies the opacity, how opaque or solid an area is. So now I'm getting those real fine wisps. And I always have my original background layer, so it's okay if I lose a little bit of this. I'm not harming the model in the making of the shot. If I still have some white that I want to clean out, I can use this Refine Radius tool so I could paint in given areas on the photo and Photoshop will reevaluate what it should drop out and what it should keep. And I know ultimately she's going to stay on the same background, so it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be a good edge on her. If it's blending away too much of her fingers or her nose because the tone in those areas was close to the background, I can choose Erase Refinements underneath. I'm just clicking and holding and switching tools. And now I'll paint over her nose and it gets back its solid color. I'll paint over each finger just a little bit, staying well on the inside. That's the goal with the Quick Selection tool. I'm very happy with this. So now what I'll do, just check her nose to make sure I got all of her nose. There it is. Now what I'll do is say output to a new layer with a layer mask. So my background stays intact and I'm separating or isolating her to her own layer. So once I do new layer with layer mask and click OK, there the background has been hidden. I've got this background copy, which I'll double click and name model 01, or just one is fine. And with my move tool, I can move this anywhere in the image, but I'll click the eye icon to turn back on the background. In some cases, you may see small lines appear when you use Refine Edge. I'm going to let it go because I'm going to run a special effect on her. And I'm going to copy the layer again. So I will right click on the layer and duplicate layer and call it Model 02. And then I'll move it over one more time. And the last copy will be my final. So the last copy, I'm going to select Model 2, right click, duplicate layer, and this will be Model 3. And this is why the line won't harm me so much, because when I'm finished, this Model 3 is actually going to stay on top of where she was originally. So here we've got one, two, and three. Let's apply some special effects. On model one, I'm going to choose Image, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation. And when I hit Colorize, there you can see she turned red in the background. I usually like this very subtle, so just a hint of the red. And I'll click OK. I'll click on Model 2, Image, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation, click Colorize, and I think I'll go for a blue in this one, or purple, and again, I'll dial down the saturation. So when I'm finished, I'll click OK again, and really, one needs to come above two, that's layer stacking order, and there is the special effect I'm going for, just a taper of the models down as if she were on top of these other two versions of her. And to really make this look cool and professional and an artistic effect, for the Model 1 layer, I'm going to set the opacity, how solid or opaque the layer is, to 50%. And for the Model 2 layer, I'm going to set the opacity to 20%. And we have used the Quick Selection tool to isolate the model to her own layer, Refine Edge to get the best selection, and several new layers to blend and do artistic effects. And it's really interesting when you turn off the top layer, you could see the original background underneath, and some of that seam that I said don't worry about on the Model 1 and 2 layer. But I'm very happy with this result, and this is the goal, to make a selection of an object, put it onto its own layers, 
make the best selection using Refine Edge and creating a neat artistic effect.